World War II was such a world-shaping event. Bonsai itself was not immune from the impact of that. We always sort of say like the popularity of bonsai can be traced back to the World War II kind of time frame of GIs being exposed to Japanese culture while they were stationed abroad and sort of then came back with this interest in bonsai, which is like half of the story. They had to seek out these Japanese American teachers and then it's like, well, where were they at during the war? sort of looking at it through the lens of bonsai, right? And that's certainly not something you associate with uh, bonsai at all, at least I never did. We just look at the trees and sort of see them for what they are now, but then it's kind of like, how did we get here? such a complex thing so just sort of taking a few of the trees that we have in our collections that are connected to these individuals and just telling their story and we can kind of just see little bits of what it was like and how bonsai still though was a source of connection for these practitioners even while they were incarcerated. And the idea of having some space for the community to have some sort of representation. I was sort of struggling to, to figure out what that looked like. We sort of became aware of Aaron Shigaki. There was a piece in the Seattle Times about one of her works she had installed at Bellevue College. She had drawn attention to the fact that the land that the college was originally built on was donated by a family who had acquired it from Japanese Americans as a result of the incarceration of World War II. Aaron. Awesome to meet you. I, I wish I was with you in that beautiful space too. I love it so much. It's like one of the best places I've installed for sure. You know, luckily there was no shortage of images of that period, which is kind of amazing, right? I often use Dorothea Lang's photos. She shot a lot of her images before people were going into the temporary camps. And I think that those capture the anxiety, you know, of the unknown and the fear so well. And then that beautiful shot of the grandfather and his grandson kind of holding him, you know, on the shoulders you see how there was an adjustment. And, you know, that sort of comes back to the exhibit and the beautiful bonsai and other things that were consistently created in these camps. It's just astonishing. Why did we have to adjust to those conditions? Because that's what you do to survive, right? And you do it to create the best possible scenario for your kids. So that they're not just absorbing all of the trauma of the adults, even though they did, <laughs> but they're also hopefully creating, you know, happy childhood memories as they should. And then of course there are these amazing cast of bonsai characters that had already been mentioned in the exhibit and I thought it would be a good idea to kind of blow them up bigger. That question has just been echoing for me as a fourth generation Japanese American yonsei like I'm free to make noise about this and my ancestors weren't. I came to this work because my grandmothers, both of them, 
were willing to talk to me when I needed to do my eighth grade Washington State history project. And I found one paragraph in the book, you know, and like, hold on a second. These shameful things that the American government has done to groups of people, including my people, is undertaught in our school system. We're developing a World War Bonsai field trip curriculum for both virtual and in-person field trips. For older students, we're um, really incorporating themes of activism, tying World War Bonsai with social movements currently going on in our culture. Art makes the topic approachable. I think that's what, what we're kind of uh, going for with the high school kids, like using art to tell a story, you know, and, and that's exactly just how I figured it out for myself too. This is how history has sort of played out. Now it's not just like, oh, that's just in the past. It's now opportunities like right now that we have a responsibility given what we know and kind of what we're seeing happen. This wave of xenophobic, anti-Asian violence is linked to this really long history of it. My goal is to continue to learn about this and understand it and sort of see how that perspective hopefully grows. And the one thing that's been so helpful is talking to um, people like Aaron and um, other representatives and scholars that actually are from that community. What I hope sort of comes of this, at least within the bonsai community, is that practitioners who are members of clubs, local organizations, um, would take some interest in learning about their club's history and any early uh, teachers that are of Japanese ancestry and that have possibly some uh, connection to incarceration. While I have a real moral imperative and obligation to tell the Japanese American story, um, what obligation do the rest of us have to tell it? Mm -hmm.